In this video I will show you how to use an analog filter so that analog write really gives you analog values. If you haven't already please check out my video about analog write before watching this one. The basic idea is that you take your analog output for example pin 3 and then you add a resistor and a capacitor. We connect it to ground and of course we need ground from here. And this would be our new output with a much smoother voltage. If you have a discharged capacitor and you connect 5 volt using this resistor then what you get is a charging curve that looks like this and and it will be charged after 5 tor because this is our time and this is our voltage and tor equals resistance times capacity and this is a time constant and when you discharge it it looks similar so if we connect 0 volt here to the charged capacitor then it will discharge like this and will take the same amount of time until it reaches approximately 1%. So here we can say it is approximately 5 volts and here it is approximately 0 volts. As you already know, if we use analog right, we will have a signal of around 500 hertz. And an RC filter, like the one I'm going to use, is blocking high frequencies. What we want is to block this high pulse width modulated frequency. And there is a thing called the cutoff frequency. And it can be calculated by this formula. And what we want is a cutoff frequency that is lower than this frequency but it also shouldn't be too low because this will lead to other consequences that we will see. I will just pick some common values and see where I end up. If I pick one kilo ohm and then one microfarad I will end up with a frequency of around 160 hertz which might be a pretty good value below half of this frequency right here. So this is um, what I will try. So I will connect ground and I will connect pin 3. Pin mode 3 output analog right 3 127. So one microfarad and 1k ground and this is my input. The output will be connected to my capacitor. You need to connect a negative pin to ground otherwise this thing can explode or at least will get damaged. And then we connect the input to the resistor like this. So now I just need an oscilloscope. And I will actually put it like this <laughs> so that you can also see what's going on. Now we use two probes, one for the input and one for the output. Let's connect the first one to my input and the second one to my output. In yellow you can see the output of the Arduino pin, which is unfiltered. And the blue line is the filtered signal, which is way more analog than the square from before. But the perfect filter would give us a straight line. Let's see what happens if we increase the capacitor. 
Okay, I will increase the capacitor from 10 to 100. Again, make sure that the polarity is correct. And now it looks almost perfect. I will now change the value. Right now it is 127, which is exactly half of the voltage. So right now I measure the average voltage of our output, which is 2.54. And I will now reduce the voltage, so let's see what happens. The voltage drops and it's still almost perfect. And let's increase it to 200. And still almost perfect analog voltage. But we have one downside and that is if the value changes, then it takes quite long until the output reaches the new desired value. So if your application requires a very fast change of the analog voltage, then you can't increase the capacitor too much. You could also increase the resistor, by the way, which is cheaper than increasing the capacitor, but then you can't draw as much current as you could with this. Let me show you what I mean. I would like to jump from 200. After 200 milliseconds, we will jump to 50. And then we wait 200 milliseconds again. So as you can see, the voltage jumps around. And if I increase my time let me remove the yellow stuff this means we do not really reach our goal so we need to increase this time let's increase it to 800 or something yeah, after 500 milliseconds we get the correct voltage but this can be calculated with this tor. So if you multiply the resistor with the capacitor, in this case we have 1000 ohm times 100 microfarad, so 0 0.0001. Our tau is 0 0.1 seconds, and after 5 tau, which is 500 milliseconds, we get our new value. So if this is fast enough for your application, it's a very smooth voltage. And again, if you if you don't really change it at all, so if you if we just stay at one voltage, then it is almost a perfect voltage. If we zoom in a lot, you will still see this ripple, but it's almost nothing at this point. So very low ripple and the signal looks way better because I really zoomed in now. So this is what one volt per division look like. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.